Isekai is a genre littered with wasted potential, yet ironically one that's also immensely popular, partly due to people's fascination with escapism. After all, leaving behind your normal, mundane life for something more grandiose and fantastical sounds pretty cool. But here's the thing, while it might sound cool, the majority of isekais, instead of creating a well thought out story, do the bare minimum. The same structure, the same setting, the same good guy protagonist which for some unexplainable reason is low key gay, is usually what you're treated to when watching the average isekai. But every now and then an outlier appears. Actually good, great, if not exceptional shows that make for really enjoyable and really impactful experiences, some of which are even in my personal favorites. Mushoku Tensei is in that category of great isekais. The story follows Rudius, a once nameless no life shut in who spent his days eating, shitting, and coming, but straight to his to fate, got his ass railed, and was then transported to a world of fantasy and magic. Nothing new, nothing special. But you know what is? The fact that we actually get to see him grow not from some default overpowered setting, but from the second he's born. Which means we experience every high, every low, every pitfall as well as every succession right alongside Rudius from childhood to adulthood. And something about that is intrinsically appealing, because we get to experience the world, the characters, and the power system in conjunction with Rudis' growth over the course of the show. It's not instant gratification, but rather a gradual progression of him getting stronger and stronger. Prior to getting isekai Rudius had nothing. He was a pitiful person whose existence was unwanted and held no value. He was constantly bullied, he lived like a slob, and he probably ate Cheetos for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Which is exactly why, when given a second chance, he resolves to make the most out of it. Through his studies, his active desire to learn, his willingness to befriend others, he works towards making this new life one where he's actually lived, where he's given life an earnest shot. And in that process, he comes to feel fulfilled in even the most normal of friendships and most mundane of tasks. His relationship with Sylph, for example, is endearing precisely because of its simple yet wholesome nature. Seeing them just mutually support and care for one another is heartwarming because it's just two good friends being two good friends. And beyond that, their relationship also does a lot in terms of characterizing Rudius himself. With a lot of other isekais, there's usually some sort of demon lord or great evil present to drive the protagonist to grow. But for Rudius, at least early on, there is no external power forcing him to strive for more. He doesn't need to learn magic or swordplay or pursue any other means of gaining strength, and so he's fully capable of regressing into his old habits and doing nothing. But he doesn't. Instead, he works on himself for himself, and more than that, he does it for those he cares about. Because at the end of the day, all it really comes down to is him wanting to become a better person. Whether it be out of curiosity or a desire for companionship, his actions and respective growth initially comes from his own wants and not from some outside threat. Which adds this level of weight behind Rudius' character journey. It makes his growth feel more earned and real. After all, not everyone wants to become a legendary hero by defeating the great demon lord. Some just want to live in comfort with loved ones by their side. And that's exactly the case for Rudius. But at the same time, he strives to hone his skills and build upon them because now that he has the opportunity to actually do something with his life, he does so without question. That being said, you should know Rudius is a perv to a distasteful degree. I'm not gonna lie to you, he has some pedo-esque tendencies and whenever stuff like that is on screen, it's kind of cringe. Personally, I usually brush these scenes off because I don't think they're that deep and I'm pretty sure their purpose is either to lighten the mood or provide quote unquote comedy, but that doesn't change the fact that a lot of people are going to get turned off from it. So this is just a heads up. Rudius can be a straight up weirdo at times and when I say weird, I mean weird. Like you'll be asking yourself why certain scenes even exist. But if you can look past that, then he's a pretty interesting MC to follow. He's competent, he gets shit done, and fun fact, his older self is actually voiced by the same VA who voiced Gintoki, so that's a pretty big plus. But every now and then, mistakes happen. Mistakes that cause the deaths of real people. And it's these mistakes that essentially act as a reality check. This might be a world of fantasy, but the life Rudius is now living is real. And that means consequences exist. Not everything will go as smoothly as he envisions. After all, this isn't a game. There are no save points, there are no do-overs. If he fucks up, 
then that's it. But it's through directly facing death itself that Rudius is able to mature and come to terms with his own flaws and imperfections. It's through this that we as viewers become all the more invested and feel all the more impacted by Rudius' character journey. We get to see him rise, then fall, then rise again. And that's where Mushoko Tensei's core really lies. It's a story about redemption, about someone trying to lead a better path all the while growing as a person. And then you've got Eris. Eris is annoying as fuck. I genuinely hated this character when she was first introduced. She threw fits like how I throw it back- wait what? She was violent, aggressive, obnoxious, and all in all, a large part of her early screen time involved her being a nuisance. But just like Rudius, she grows over the course of the show and learns to become a decent human being. She goes from being a spoiled brat to an actually respectable person, and I found that development pretty enjoyable, because while in the past, she cared very little for those around her and would actively avoid putting in work, she eventually came around and ended up becoming super hardworking as well as genuinely compassionate. She learned how to put her ego aside, how to care for others, and how to act for the betterment of everyone rather than just herself. Granted, it was definitely a slow process, but nonetheless one that had a worthwhile payoff. And that payoff applies not just to the characters, but also to Mushoku Tensei as a whole. You see, at first the setting and overall story starts off relatively simple, but this simplicity works in favor of the show because of how the story is told and how it's built upon. When Rudius first gets isekai he knows nothing, and likewise, we the audience know nothing. And so what we're treated to is a simple world with simple characters. And with that as the foundation, the story then becomes increasingly layered as Rudius acquires more and more knowledge, which not only adds to Mushoko Tensei's world building, but also gives us this sense of accomplishment because we get to see the entire progression of him getting from point A to point B. In other words, every time Rudius learns something new, we feel a wave of satisfaction as a result of us expanding our understanding just as he does. And in that process, we embark on this grand adventure from seeing only his village to exploring kingdoms, rainforests, icy mountains, and lands filled with sand. And it's through this journey that Mushoko Tensei's more darker elements are made known. From kidnapping to blackmail to slavery to murder, corruption of various kinds exist all throughout. In this world, there are people more than willing to walk the path of evil for their own benefit. People who even at the expense of others have fabricated entire truths and narratives as a means to control the unknowing masses. And as cruel and unfair as it may be, it's something Rudius encounters and faces off against multiple times over. When it wants to be, Mushoko Tensei looks really, really good. The animation is superb, the music is solid, the character dynamics are executed upon pretty damn well, and there are these more tender, emotional highs that I find touching. For example, when Roxy reunites with her parents, or when Paul apologizes to Rudius, or when Rudius hugs Eris. These are moments I love because of how human and genuine they feel. All this to say, Mushoko Tensei is an isekai done right. Yes, it has some controversies, but overall, its pros far outweigh its cons. The adaptation is incredible, the story is compelling with a gradual increase in complexity and depth, the characters are likable, there's this real sense of adventure and discovery to everything being told and shown, and I get the sense that there's still so much more left to explore and potential to unravel. So if you've been in need of an actually good isekai, then you won't find it here. Because Mushoku Tensei isn't just a good show, but a great one.